International Festival of the Sea is the biggest maritime event ever held in Britain to celebrate 500 recorded years of seafaring enterprise and the 500th anniversary of John Cabot's voyage in the Matthew to the New World. Designed by Brunel, the SS Great Britain, 322 feet long, launched in 1843. The dining saloon restored to its Victorian splendor along with the promenade deck. She was powered by an inverted V-steam engine driving a six-bladed propeller weighing four tons, giving her a speed of 12 and a half knots. The hull is fixed with 60,000 hand-driven rivets, displacement 3,270 tons. The open deck was no place in bad weather. Crew life was cheap. Anyone washed overboard was left. Secondary power was provided for by the more customary masts and sails. The wheel, the only method of steering the ship coupled directly to the massive rudder, was so balanced that in rough weather the ship could be steered by only two men. Bristol's historic harbour presents a marvellous sight with more than 700 ships of many types having sailed in from around the world. Memories of the Dunkirk epic legend are recalled when the little ships helped bring off 300,000 British and Allied soldiers. As a terrible plume of black smoke darkened the sky and bombs rained down, these little ships sailed in to pick up the lines of men wading into the sea. Every five years, the Association of Dunkirk Little Ships makes the crossing to France to commemorate the event. The beautifully kept La Moette is one of these little ships with a big history. Cadets under sail training feel the wind in handling their small lugger. Built in 1981, Asgard II, Asgard means home of the gods, is a sail training vessel from Ireland. Alan Stacey and Bob Fenton applying their special skills to the 12-foot long craft, a ship's boat for the Matthew. Made by a team of skilled craftsmen, the original Matthew would have carried such a boat as this. Twenty-six massive trees were used to build the magnificent 15th century replica of John Cabot's famous ship, the Matthew. The mast is a 75-foot Douglas fir tree. Originally, the 70-foot long ship had a crew of 18 armed with arrows against monsters and hostile natives. The Royal Navy is represented by HMS Atherston. A welcoming vessel with her crew proves very popular, especially to the many boys swarming all over her. Hell hath no fury like cadets pulling hard to race the long length of Bristol's harbour. Dexterity and Dropsy is the name of this troop.
Transferers of Commerce, Thames barges nestle with seven tracks. Fishes of all sorts brought ashore in age-old ways. Good quality baby shark and pink pollock are raised from the hold, ready for market. Ships navigating the strong tides into Bristol had to be well built, hence the phrase ship shape and Bristol fashion. All tidy, all in place. Styled arrivals come on the Orient Express. This is the Dockside Express. Tom Burnell works on a Jolly Jack Tar figurehead. Typical of dock and harbour transport of a bygone era is the timber hall here. The child obviously strikes a rapport with Ned. Heave ho me hearties, this barge presents a vision of preeminence for whoever is on board. Something tasteful or distasteful. From Liverpool, the Tug Brocklebank, a powerful vessel with an interesting past. Many tides have raced since this narrator was last in her presence. Truly, her crew know the meaning of ship shape and Bristol fashion. The much-loved Waverley, the last seagoing paddle steamer, still provides regular summer trips of nostalgia. Figureheads are not simply decorative. Sailors given to superstition thought they would guide their ship to safety. This damsel is well blessed for this. If a crew is to successfully commune with nature, preparation for the inner man is essential. From Germany, the mine hunting boat, minesweeper Bad Bevenson, Bevenson Spa, of the Mine Search Squadron. Not as welcoming as our own Royal Navy ship, it is noted. Throughout the four days of the festival, over 1,000 musicians of various styles will perform in several locations. Civilization, love. 
Svatitel Nikolai, St. Nicholas, a Russian-built replica of a 16th century Baltic trader. She was the first ship to arrive, six months before the festival commenced. The woolen sweaters are for sale. The French schooner Etoile, wooden built, is used to train French naval cadets and officers. Sir Walter Raleigh, with his lady, richly dressed, returned to grace the festival. During his long sojourn in the Caribbean, seemingly, he had developed an aversion to cameramen. The massive port garth resting silently at her moorings in contrast to her more usual activity of keeping the waterways clear. Harveys of Bristol celebrate the 200th anniversary of importing their famous cream sherry. During the same era the famous Bristol Blue Glass was developed, now brought together Bristol Cream Sherry in Bristol Blue Glass. The ship is the noted Cascalot, star of many films and TV series. The American replica of the 18th century British frigate HMS Rose, a warship of the line circa 1757. She is the largest wooden sailing ship in the world and cost one and a half million pounds to build. A ship of beautiful design, she arrived in Bristol having completed her first Atlantic crossing skippered by Captain Richard Bailey. A display comprising 20,000 fireworks donated by Octavius Hunting Company, the most spectacular ever seen in Bristol, provides a colourful backdrop to the dedication ceremony of the replica of John Cabot's ship, Matthew. Rotating to port as she leaves, the Matthew acknowledges first St. Mary Redcliffe Merchant's Church, then Bristol Cathedral, and lastly, the Cabot Tower. In 1494, Giovanni Caboto, anglicised as John Cabot, got Bristol's merchants to finance him. His main sponsor was Richard Americ. On June 24th, Cabot discovered Newfoundland. The rest is history. In May 1997, coincident with John Cabot sailing from Bristol, the Matthew will sail again for Newfoundland to join in that province's 500th anniversary celebrations. <laughs> <laughs>